Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to teach you guys how to protect, store, and organize your cards. I've been doing a lot of different methods, and so I've been trying to optimize my storage units and the way I protect my cards, and I think I have a really, really good system, so I kinda of just wanted to go through my general process and go over the pros and cons of each system, like binders versus boxes versus just having top loaders. Just go over all that and just go over all the equipment and just general tips and tricks that I think are really important to storing and organizing your cards and just keeping them safe. So hopefully this will be helpful to you guys, but let's just get into it really quick. Really quick before we get started though, I just wanted to let you guys know that Jin's Glasses is now offering a Pokemon product line. They just sent me, Van, and Bex our own copies. We got three frames. We all got the Mew model, but there's a bunch of different models. There's a Pikachu model, there's a Snorlax model, we got Eevee model, there's Johto models too. And so they're really, really cool. Here's me. I look really smart. And here's the cases they come in. The branding is super, super good. I love that. That looks so good. And then we got the microfiber cloth. You already know I'm gonna use these to clean cards. But, so yeah. And for a limited time, they're offering free blue light lenses, which is a $60 value if you buy any frame. So definitely check that out. It'll help reduce eye strain, especially from looking at screens. So I know you guys are gamers and you guys spend a lot of time on the computer. So definitely check that out. And yeah, one last thing I gotta say is they have virtual try on. So. Over here, I'm gonna show you guys me trying on the frames. I'm trying on the Pikachu frames. Um, it's super easy. All you need is a webcam or a camera and you can just try them on digitally and see how you look. So check it out. We also have our own special code. It'll be the Flex Gods 15, which will give you guys $15 off your order from Jins. So check out their link. It's gonna be the first line in the description. And then remember to use our code, the Flex Gods 15 to save $15 off your order. So back to the video. First things first is you're gonna wanna sleeve pretty much every card you own. Like we got the Scyther here, Shiny is actually not sleeved. I slipped all this into my binder when I first, first started and none of these are sleeved. And I'm glad I slipped them in at least, but you're gonna wanna sleeve everything because at the end of the day, sleeves protect your cards. I have some cards that I didn't sleeve that I regret very, very badly. So it's kind of the struggles, but so the optimal sleeves I would say are penny sleeves. They come in bags like this. Typically, they'll be 100 for a dollar if you can find them at your local store. So pretty much you're paying a penny to sleeve a card. It's definitely worth it. If you guys are just starting out, one, so sleeve it up right there, beautiful. One thing I super, super recommend is just buying a lot of penny sleeves. You don't need to sleeve up your bulk, but I would say anything that's reverse hollow or hollow is worth it for the most part, and definitely any vintage cards. You wanna just stop any damage you can from the beginning. And so I always use penny sleeves on most of my cards. Your other options for sleeves are these colored sleeves. There's different brands. There's like Ultra Pro and then there's like BCW. These are a little bit stiffer and firmer and they have their uses, but I usually always use penny sleeves because you can see the backs of the cards. So you can double check condition and centering and all that stuff without much hassle. Um, these do have their own uses though. So you can buy these from any card shop. These are a little bit more expensive because they're a little bit sturdier. So you can feel, you can see the difference. I don't know if you can necessarily tell on camera, but there is a, they're a little bit stiffer and they're a little bit smaller, which has its own uses. So I'll show you guys in a second what I use each one for respectively. And there's also the ETB sleeves too. You can just get from collecting Pokemon cards. So they all work. They all have their own uses. It just depends on your end goals. So I definitely say just use what you can if you don't have any sleeves on you. Um, go buy some, just do what you can with it. Sleeve pretty much everything. Um, but yeah, no, I'll show you these guys in action later in the next clip. Just so you guys know too, typically everything I'm talking about can be found in card stores. So definitely check out your local card shop. It's gonna be a lot cheaper there. But if you guys can't find them, I'm gonna link them in the description below. So everything will be listed if you guys need to find it online. Cool, so once you guys have sleeved up all your cards, the next decision is do you do binders? Do you do boxes? There's a lot of different choices. So we'll talk about binders first because binders are the most popular. So here's my binder. Personal, I have a bunch more. This is like my hollow modern binder. And then here's my other binder. I personally do not recommend using binders. Here's my Skyridge binder for all the OGs. But 
I honestly personally don't recommend binders. There's a lot of issues that can go wrong with binders. I'm actually trying to transport all of these into boxes soon. But so as you can see, a lot of binders are three ring binders. And so a lot of issues happen there. Like cards will get caught or your card can jam and hit the metal, like the metal part. And you really want to avoid that. It's just, they're nice. Binders are really nice. I think it's cool if it's for your PC or like just cards you don't necessarily care about, but there's a lot of things that can go wrong with binders. And then also with binders that are like this, dirt can get in, debris can get in. I've gone through a lot of people's old binders and they'll have cards like really, really clean, but the tops will be dirty because they just get dirty from dirt just getting in. So definitely avoid that. If you guys are gonna get a binder, I recommend getting a binder that where the pages are already inside the binder. But if you guys can't do that, this one's pretty good. It protects from dirt. It has a little like this, a little zipper. I do recommend it. This one's really, really nice. I'm um, probably just gonna use it for more like my PC cards or cards that are kind of damaged that I can't necessarily get treated. Um, But yeah, so that's that about binders. Also too, what I recommend is I would recommend using side loading pages like this. So then what that helps prevent is um, the dirt thing, like I said. So your sleeves will be in like this, so no dirt can come in from the top. And then nothing can come in from the side. So I like these a lot. I'll link these. I think these are super, super nice if you're using binders. I think it's by Totem World. And what's nice about these two is they have holes on both sides. So there's a card goes in here. And then if you place another card, it has its own thing on the back. So they actually don't rub into each other. So that's really, really nice. But if you guys do get three ring binders and you want pages, these the side loading binders are really, really good. Otherwise, I'd say just get the binders with pages already included. Um, stop that. As for loading the cards, it's okay if you have a bunch of bolt cards and you're just putting them in, just like preserve them. But I don't recommend that for your rare cards or like your cool cards. Also, I really don't recommend putting like four or five duplicates in a page that's like really really bad for the cards i've seen people where they put like six or seven in the page and it causes all the other cards on top of it to like warp and deform so i definitely only recommend putting one card in per slot um as terms of in terms of sleeving them and putting them in i would not recommend penny sleeves so if you put the penny sleeve in here this applies to most binder pages too if you try to put it in it like crams the sleeve in it just is weird. You see how it's all jammed in there? I don't know if you guys can see that, but it just makes the sleeve all weird. I've seen a lot of people do that over like just looking through people's binders and the sleeves get all deformed and weird. I don't think it messes up the card, but I just don't like taking the risk and it feels kind of weird. So what I do typically is you either grab an ETB sleeve or you grab like a BCW sleeve, one of those colored thicker sleeves and they fit perfectly in there. Watch, I'll show you. So sleeve it up. And then you see it slides in perfect. It fits like super, super nice in there. So I'll take that out too. It works really good with ETB sleeves also, which you guys probably have a bunch laying around. So there you go. And then see it fits super, super nice. It doesn't like make the sleeve fit in really, really weird. So it's like nice and snug. Feels really good. But so yeah. That's pretty much it in terms of binders. So overall, the pros of binders are they're really nice to scroll through. It's really easy to just fill up the sleeve, like the sleeves, and just scroll through all the cards. It feels really, really good. It's really nice. The pros, that's pretty much the only pro, honestly. Um, they're a little bit less safe than I would say than putting them in top loaders and boxes, which we'll go over in a second. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Also, a con that I really don't like about them is watch. If you want to check the condition, it's such a pain. You have to pull it out, and then you have to pull out this card. You can't, like, quickly check the condition of a card. And if you're going through, like, 20 cards, it becomes super, super tedious. So that's the only other thing that I want to bring up. But other than that, they're really nice. I would say they're really good for personal collection, like just cards that you know you don't want to grade and you just kind of want to have in a little binder. They're also really, really good if you just want to display it and like show it to your friends and stuff and have them scroll through it. Also, if you have a smaller collection, it's really nice to just put it in a binder and that's it and it's done. And it's organized pretty well. Also, one last con I would say too 
is if you have your binder pages full and you have an organization system, you have to move everything over and over to keep adding to certain slots and pages. So that's kind of a pain also. It's really bad for organizing. But yeah, that's binders in a nutshell. And next we'll go over to bot like over with top loaders and boxes. I think that So basically your next option is gonna be putting cards in top loaders. They're like these hard plastic cases that protect your card from damage. So typically, really quick, what I will do is I'll slide the card in like this. So here's the gap at the top, right? If you guys can see that. And then I'll slide it in this way. Usually they just slide in. You can just push them in and it'll be chilling. And then this prevents dirt from getting in in any direction. So it can't get in from here, obviously, in the sides. But here, dirt can get in. But what happens is the sleeve is in the way. So that prevents any dirt from coming in. Because if you put it the other way like this, watch, let me see. If you put it in this way where the top is like here and the top is like that, it allows dust and dirt to get in there. So you just want to avoid that. That's what I do. I don't know how everyone else does it, but that's typically what I do just to avoid the dirt. If you guys have any ideas about that or comments about that, just let me know in the comments below. But that's typically what I do. And so this is a nice top loaded card. Your other options are card savers, but I don't really like card savers. They're a little bit thicker and then they have a weird top thing too. So it just makes it inconvenient for storing, which we'll talk about right now. So once you have your cards top loaded and sleeved and all your bulk organized and stuff, you want to put them in boxes. That's typically what I do. So your options, usually you can use Elite trainer boxes, that's one option because I figured you guys would have some anyway. So I kind of organize them like that. If you want to too, you don't have to use the lid. Like I use the lid as one and I use the base as another box. You can do it like that, whatever makes you guys happy. I don't typically use ETBs, but it's a good way to organize your cards. So I put all the good ones in a top loader and then I'll create sections. So what I did here, if you guys can tell is I put a section here. So these are Fire Emblem cards actually, they're not Pokemon cards because I don't have that many Fire Emblem cards, so I'd put them in an ETB. But so all my rare ones, like my hollow ones are here, and I use top loaders to divide the rarity. So here's this, this is like the rares, these are the commons. So this helps organize them a lot. So that's definitely an option. Your other option that I really recommend is going to local card stores, and they have big boxes like this. So they have like two row boxes where you can fit two rows of cards pretty nice they have a bunch of different options there's two row and then there's single row right here and then there's three row which is this one it's a little bit heavier three row and there's also a five row one i'm not gonna grab it right now there's a bunch of different rows so you can just figure out what works best for you i use three rows personally because if it's really nice on a shelf, five is really cumbersome and really big and heavy and kind of annoying. I think for me, three was like a good balance of like having a lot of storage space, but also not being really annoyingly big. That's good. And so basically I would say the pros and cons of boxes versus binders is that the organization system of a box is way, way better. Basically, you can put dividers in there and you're pretty much chilling. And you can pull out cards and check conditions super easy. Like, watch. So, bam, pull out these cards. You can look at them. You can check out the backs. This is why Penny Sleep plus Top Loader combo is super goaded. Because you can pretty much just super condition check your cards, like, really, really fast. Um, oh, man, where were these? I think these were here. But, anyways, so that's really, really nice. And also too, I put a bunch of dividers in here just to section everything off. It feels really good. As opposed to a binder where if you have to add things or remove things, it's kind of a pain. So especially if you have to add things too, if you have cards that are in a section and then you wanna add more cards, you either have to move other cards or you have to add more pages, which is like adds up over time. It's kind of a pain. I mean, granted you can have binders for different things, but other than that, I would say boxes are way better for organization and just optimization of going through things. And also boxes just feel a lot safer. So basically you have a box, you have a card in a plastic holder. Oh, these are not in plastic holders. Rip. But you have a card in a plastic holder and you can pull it out and put it in another box, which just helps protect it even more. So 
I definitely recommend that. And honestly, the physicality of the cards feels really, really good. Like I can pull out all these cards and just look through them. It feels really nice. It just hits way different than a binder in my opinion. Binder feels good for like quick looking through cards, but for like deep going through cards, hits way, way better just going through these cards. Feels really nice. Um, but yeah, that's my pros. You got any other pros? Van's in the back. Yeah. I don't have any pros. Okay, cool. But those are my pros. I don't necessarily see any cons personally. They do take a, up a little bit more space, I would say. And top loaders are a little bit expensive. But if you find good deals on top loaders, um, which if you want to find good deals, go to Cardboard Gold and then look for the next time they're restocking and just cop a restock. That's what I did. And I got them for pretty cheap. They were like under like 10 cents a top loader, which is really nice. I personally prefer it. And... Yeah, that's why I love boxes more. They just stack. You can have different boxes for different situations, different types of cards, and then you can just super organize them super, super hard. But yeah, I'm going to show you guys my organization system next, and I think that'll be the end of the video. So on to the next section. Cut. Recording. Cool. Yo, so we got Van on camera duty really quick just to show you guys my organization system. And so basically I got all my cards top loaded. I got all this bulk right here. And basically, watch, is that good? Can you see? Yeah. Okay, cool. So basically I have dividers for every type of section, I guess in a way. So you can buy these at local card shops too. They're nice, watch, let me pull it out. It's like nice little pieces of plastic. They're cool. You can use your own, you can use cardboard. And basically I used a um, label maker to label these and print them out. They're pretty cool. So you stick them in here. And so I have a bunch of different sections. So I have to grade here. I have energies. I have damaged. I have modern. I have stamp hollows. What else? I got Japanese R for Japanese rares. I got Japanese hollows here. And then I got e-readers. So those are nice. Another alternative you can use for um, dividers is I use a top loader. So I use these for my like subsection dividers. But so basically watch. I have this here. So I have Watsi hollow section. And I put that down and then I use a top loader with a little tab. And so it says NM there. So I organize them into categories depending on condition. So all my Watsi hollows, I have NM, I have LP, I have MP, I have HP, and then I have the damage ones here. So you can create subsections of dividers too. So that's what I did. It's pretty fun. So like here's all my near mint cards, pull them out. These are all my near mint ones, so I can take them out. And then it's just nice. You can like take them out and like put them back in. It just feels really, really good to have an organization system like this. You just have to be careful with your cards when you pull like them in and out. But other than that, it's super chilling. Like watch, I got my grading set to grade section right here. So this is to grade. And then the ones I haven't checked yet for like condition are here. And then I have the ones that are ready that I double checked here. So these are my to grades right now. And then you can also put little notes on here too. So I put PSA nine is approximately $80. So like, I think this might get a nine just so I know when I'm submitting cards, you know? So we got Alakazam, Ooh, we got banned Misty's Tears. But yeah, no, it's really, really nice. I definitely do like boxes a lot more than binders. So yeah, that's how I organize. Um, yeah, I guess there's a little bit of miscellaneous stuff. So we'll talk about that really quick too. And <laughs> cool all right guys so then there's miscellaneous ways to store things um for psa cards i have them in these so they're like little sleeves let me find a bag for you guys really quick Ugh. where are they here watch i even organize all my protection equipment but they come in bags like this so there's like the graded sleeve bag these are perfect fit ones. They feel way, way better. So they're like super nice. So there's also other ones like these. These are okay. But yeah, so definitely the perfect fit ones are really good for PSA cards. Um, But yeah, so that's that. I put all the PSA cards in this little box right here. So I put them in here. And then for booster packs, just random aside. So I store them like this. So I put them in a perfect fit. Watch, let me pull it out. Because I know some of you guys might collect booster packs, but so basically what you want to do is I find these tarot card sleeves. These are really good for booster packs if you have a booster pack collection. 
So you put them in here and that's pretty good on its own, but these are like super crazy vintage ones. So I'll put that in there and I'll get a card saver one and just slide it in and it slides in super, super nice. And then I just put it in this little baggie and just seal it off. So watch, let me put it in real quick. Bam, there we go. And then just seal it off and then you're good and it's protected. So yeah, I do that with most booster packs. So I do that and I all just kind of put it in this box right here. This is like a single row box. It's a PSA card box, especially. So I'm trying to find a better one, like a higher end one. Uh, I hit up some local companies to try to send me boxes, but they're, they're trying to work out the issues right now. But so once I find a really good PSA card box, I'll show you guys. I also do that with sealed product too, like this special delivery Pikachu. Oh, shout out, shout out to Jonas.Pokemon too. He sent me this card. He's the GOAT. But yeah, no, so I put it in that weird tarot card sleeve and I slide into a card saver and then I put it in this right here. So it's really nice. I say it really helps protect the sleeved cards. So what else we got? Charizards, Ancient Mew. Yeah, so that's what I do with sleeved, like, protected cards. Or what is it? What's the word? Unsealed. Sealed. sealed. Yeah, sealed Pokemon cards. <laughs> but yeah, so also, too, it's nice with these two so you can put sticky notes. I put sticky notes here just to check out the centering of each specific Charizard. So it's nice to just leave yourself little notes and just keep yourself organized. So... But yeah, I think that's pretty much it, guys. I don't really have anything else to say. That's how I organize my cards. That's how I protect them. It feels really good to me. And so yeah, that's pretty much it. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed this video. Other than that, organize your cards. Have fun with it. Later. Like and subscribe.